what's up, y'all? Got another mechanican type of video situation going on. Jeez, pretty big project. Not too bad. Medium scale, maybe. It's a timing chain set operation and guides and tension earth. Look at my new stuff. These are camshaft holding tools and this is the bottom tier timing chain set. <clears throat> you got two different options when it comes to getting your timing chain set. Both of them come with both the new timing chains, the guides, and the tensioner doodads. What push on the back side of these guides to hold tension on your timing chains. But in the other set, you also get new camshaft gears and new crank gears. But with this being the first timing chain set that this car has ever seen, and it only being like 120,000-ish in the miles, we don't know the odometer broke at 66, you know? But it's not, it's not like in the hundreds of thousands of miles, so we shouldn't have worn out gears. Also, this car just barely is making the timing chain rattle noise at an idle. It doesn't really sound like the chains are slapping. It's just enough that you can tell. And if you're driving up a hill and you ease down on the throttle, you just can hear a little bit of a uh, valve train rattle or chain rattle. Maybe both. I don't know. But it's not much noise is what I'm saying. When those chains get really bad, you'll hear a lot of slapping and, and moving around. So with the with these with that in mind, <laughs> that this engine's not that old, and the fact that the uh, chains aren't really, really worn and things aren't slapping around on top of our gears, it's unlikely that our gears are damaged. So that was the thought process behind me going with the cheaper set. It cost, I think, nearly $100 more to get the gears. And this is an expensive venture, if you haven't caught on to that yet. These uh, holding tools, which, by the way, you could definitely just, you know, weld and cut together something to act as a holding tool. And it would be a lot cheaper than what I did here but I don't have my welder set up yet, and yeah, I just really needed to be able to do this correctly. And the uh, these things are pretty expensive. They're like 60 bucks a piece, and then I had to pay shipping. Oh, my word. Anyway, they're really important. See, when we get down into here and remove on everything, we're going to pull these uh, valve covers, and when we take the chains off of the whole situation we're no longer going to have anything holding our cams from spinning and that's a big deal because they have all the spring pressure on them from the valves what they're holding down at the time and if i take the chain off without holding the cam still it's going to spin the cam then it'll be out of time yeah that sucks too but there's one more thing fellers this is an interference engine meaning pistons and valves share the same airspace. So if we were to just take the chain off and let that cam spin, there's a good chance it would fling a valve into a piston that's up and it wouldn't and it could uh, bend a bend a valve stem and it's just not not a good situation. You really don't want it to do that. So anyway, now we're going to start taking it apart.
Now we're torn down that far. Looks like it won't actually be necessary to remove the radiator trim cover guy. Or the radiator. Because there's a lot of space in here. So the next thing we need to do before we uh, pull the serpentine belt off like I just did and had to put it back on quick. The uh, water pump pulley is going to be in our way. We may be able to leave the water pump on, but either way, if we have to remove the water pump or if we can leave it there, we still need to get this pulley out of the way. So we threw the belt back on quick to hold the pulley still, and we'll remove the four 10 meter, 10 millimeter bolts out of that. Then we get to go down to our crank pulley and take out the uh, 18 millimeter bolt out of the end of that and pull that pulley off because she's going to be in the way of our big V-shaped front cover coming off. Yeah. As far as my idler pulley and the tensioner, the idler is in the way of that bolt, but the tensioner might be able to stay on the cover. We'll find out. The AC compressor could be out of the way. I'll know here in a minute. The uh, uh, power steering pump is definitely in the way, either it or the pulley. I need to get down there and see if the pump is bolted into this timing cover. If it's not, we may be able just to pull the pulley off of it. Who knows? And we'll move on to these coil pack brackets. Take that one and that one off, and that should start clearing up the timing cover. And then we get to pull the valve covers off. That just looks wonderful. Minimal clearance, you betcha. No clearance, even better. <laughs> you may be able to see my situation. We've got our water pump pulley pulled, and I took the bolt out of the end of the crank that secures our crank pulley. And helpful tip, full advice on that there, fellas. When you go to put your big breaker bar on that bolt and turn it, you're just going to spin the engine over backward. So, what I did, if you're not familiar on the back side of these four sixes, well, it's the back end of the motor, but you're like looking at it this way, there's a little rubber cover, you might be able to see it down there, it's pretty dark, but there's a little rubber cover, or there should be, yours may be missing, and you can pop that out of the way, and it is there to access the torque converter bolts at your Mission. So I popped that off, rolled the motor around to where I could see one of my 9 16 torque converter bolts, took a 6.14 millimeter deep well socket, slid it onto it, and then when I came back over here and went to turn on the crank bolt, it rolled a little bit, went click as the uh, socket hits the top side, or the bottom, no, the top side of that um, access hole, and then that held the crank still for me. So I could just pull nice and gentle, even didn't even need to slap the breaker bar or the hammer or anything. And uh, it also made up for me not having a big half-inch impact guy. If I had one of those, you'd probably just zip it out that way. But anyway, that was a really neat, helpful tip for how you hold the crankshaft still to take that bolt out. And now I'm pulling the pulley off. I got to break out my, my Harbor Freight bolt type style pulley puller I think it's it says wheel puller on it bolt type wheel puller set Ooh, Pittsburgh it worked out just right having so many different bolts to choose from I had three that actually fit the thread in the crank the crank's got like a little try ain't try three way thing and there's bolt holes in all of it like you see so that makes it where we can bolt this funny looking shaped thing up onto the front of the pulley and then we run this guy through it pushes against the end of the crank and you spin on it and off comes the pulley Ooh, wonderful and then we pull more stuff off okay now so we've got our crank pulley pulled off and now we're moving over to another pulley puller there's a lot of that on this job we're over here on the power steering pump pulley because the uh, pump is like bolted to this timing cover from the bottom side and it looks like I can't really get to those bolts well with the pulley in the way so we're just going to pull it off right now. 
That fully tool is a 670 tin at the O'Reilly's. And also, we come up here, and you'll see there's a lot more clearance on the front end, and there's our ignition coils. I came over, unplugged the coil, and the, the other little thing that I forgot what is called on that side from both sides, and on this side there's this extra sensor here. Maybe it's a knock sensor? I'm, I don't know. Got those taken loose. There's like a couple 13 millimeter bolts, three of them over here, a bolt and two nuts. On this side it's two bolts. And then I just took and set them to the top for now. We'll probably end up pulling the spark plug wires out, but I'm not sure yet. Haven't done one of these jobs before. I can definitely tell the power steering pump's in the way of that cover coming off, though. And the AC compressor, it might not be in the way on this model. Because it seems like the three bolts that hold the compressor on went into the block, so it may actually clear the case coming off. If it doesn't, we'll just pull the three mounting bolts out and set her down to the side. So now, I'll keep pulling this pulley off. And then we'll, and then we'll come up here before we take all the bolts out of the timing cover and the couple from the oil pan up and the, the two into it on the ends of the valve covers. We also got to pull the valve covers off quick. What it looks like when you pull the pulley off of the power steering pump. Then I've taken loose the connection to the pump and there's also an oil pressure sensor around the corner over here that I unplugged. There's three mounting bolts for this pump. One here, one goes that way and is over here. And there's a third one down there I'll show you in a moment. But these two out front you can get from the front of the vehicle. Although there's really not enough room for a socket and a wrench, I mean a ratchet anywhere. But you can get a wrench here. And on this one, it looks like even though this fitting is in the way, I got a wrench in here, took it loose and spun it down. I just got the other one loose and I think I can like pull it away and unthread the last bit of it and not have to take the power steering lines loose then just let the pump lay to the side and then down here on the bottom side of the car you'll see where i've got my wrench mounted that's the third mounting bolt which also you could almost get a uh, socket and a ratchet on but the socket and the extension and whatever situation i came up with lines right up with the electrical connection on the power steering pump so that makes some clearance issues and you can't get on it straight and I don't want to round it off so I also used a wrench down here since there's a good range of motion and I could get the wrench seated all the way. No stripped bolts yet so far. Well, my mistook. There's actually four mounting bolts on the power steering pump. So we were just down here on the bottom side. And up here, there's a fourth one that we at least can get a ratchet on, so that's nifty. But yeah, four bolts, and then it'll come off. Two bolts in the cover, two bolts in the block. Okay, now, moving back up topwards with it, up here on the passenger side valve cover. I've popped this loose. Was it this? I had a wiring harness. Something's clipped up here to these clips. I unclipped that. That gave me room to take this loose. I took the PCV connection here. It's up there. Took that loose from the PCV valve. That made it where I could flip this uh, EVAP hose over to that side of it. Up here, I've taken the little EVAP canister burge valve situation loose. So I had more wiggle room on this side. There's another wire harness clip here on top of that valve cover bolt in the back corner. When you get the harness loose from these guys, these studs down low, you can pull some wires out of the way. And right over here in that back corner, 
where it's really hard to see and even harder to get to. I left my ratchet on it so you'd have an idea. There's that back corner bottom most valve cover bolt. That's going to be the hardest one to get to. But I have just barely enough room between the heater box and the valve cover for that ratchet to spin. And I've already broke it loose, so that's wonderful. So now that all our things are unclipped from the bolts, we can go through and take all these bolts loose, which, by the way, are a 8mm, and you're going to need a deep socket 8mm. I don't actually have one, but I do have a deep socket 5 16 which is really similar to an 8mm, but not quite, so you'd much rather have an 8mm. It would fit better. Because nearly all these bolts have the studs on them. There's just a handful that don't. So now I'll go around and take all those bolts loose and we'll wiggle that valve cover up off of there, which that should be easy, easy peasy to come out of that space. No, no it won't. Now that we got that valve cover off, see there's our left passenger side cam gear and our chain. Woo! Now I come over here with our fancy expensive cam holding tool. On the bright side, it was expensive, but at least it fits just right. Both the little legs are sitting flat on the uh, mating surface for the valve cover on each side here and these bolts are tightened down good and tight to keep a cinch on that cam so she won't spin on us. The only thing I had to do is you see this little bracket down here what held uh, this wire harness thing in place. I had to take a pry bar in here and give that a little to the side to make room for my foot to sit how it needed to and other than that that thing fit in there nice. Now moving to the other valve cover, we've had to start doing a little more disassemblies. You may notice the uh, windshield wipers are not there anymore and the grates that go underneath them. Next up here, I'm going to pull these bolts for this windshield wiper assembly tray. And we'll get this whole tray out of the way because way, way back up in there, is another valve cover bolt and the one next to the brake booster that's also going to be a lot of fun but it just doesn't look like there's much any way to get in there very good you may i feel like you probably could get those bolts out and pull the valve cover without taking this out but this job's hard enough so let's just pull a few more screws and a couple bolts and get some more things out of the way to make it a little easier to get to things got the windshield wiper situation all taken loose just a couple of eight millimeter bolts and then there's that big red plug-in over yonder word that hooks up to it and of course the uh, that little hose right there is your washer fluid line and then that gave me a lot more clearance to get to those back two bolts on this valve cover all I had to take loose here is you see this big uh, engine wire harness you can take that loose and that'll probably help get it off easier but I didn't take that loose I just disconnected the little harness connector underneath it and it's up here right now and that got all the wire out of the way so I could get back there and work and lift and move that one out would definitely recommend you just go ahead and drain the cooling system because getting over that radiator hose was a nightmare just not fun at all but anyway now we've got our cover up over here we got the room to install our other can tool while I was down there on the oil pump I went ahead and pulled the four bolts out of the bottom of the timing cover 10 millimeters super duper tight as can be by the way so now it's about time we'll run around the rest of the timing cover get all those bolts out of there looks like there's about four five eleven million of them 
And then when we get those out of the way, we'll pop the timing cover. Now we've got all the 11 million bolts pulled out from around the edges of this guy. And I've got an old Ford truck bed full of Crown Victoria. Can you? Nope. Oh, that's really dark. Anyway, I've got all my bolts laid out in a V-shape to help me remember where which was everybody went. So, now we've about reached the point. It's time to set you guys up on a tripod and uh, try to pull that cover off. Maybe it'll just come right off easy peasy kajeezy. Probably not. <laughs> Well, doesn't that just look like a big, fancy, complicated, terrifying, oh my god. Not really. It kind of sucks getting down to here, but I mean, it's really a pretty simple situation. And if we come over here and look, the passenger side chain really doesn't seem bad. Like you can tell, there's plenty of the tension into it. But look at the driver's side chain. See that? Now, now look onto this. That's a lot of play, fellers. I guess that's just the weird way that they wear. Because it's like, maybe the tensioner being on the underside over here is a better setup than it being on the top side. Maybe even it's just like a tensioner failure over here causing that. Either way, we got new chains and guides and tensioners, so life should be wonderful. But yeah, isn't that weird? All the slops on one side. Well, I bet you that would explain our rough idle, and uh, while the car idles, you can hear a little sound that sounds just like that. Yep, so I bet you that, that's that noise at an idle. Woo-hoo-hoo! interesting how different the gears are from one side to the other and also on top of the motor it just looks a different shade of clean on the driver's side than it does on the passenger side isn't that strange yeah anywho oh also when it came to uh removing this cover there was one other part i forgot to show on to you there's a sensor right here that i unplugged that sensor is in the timing cover She's the crank positioning sensor, on account of, I can speculate that because it's a doodad pointed right here at that wheel around the crank guy. Alright, so now I removed my socket from the torque converter bolt I had back there holding the crank still. I rolled it around the top dead center. I verified that by looking in our little Cran Victoria book at this illustration here when we're in top dead center number one the little dot on the crank should be straight down and the one on the cam here should be kind of over that way and that one's like about the same over that way and over here on our unit the little reluctor wheel guy just slides right off out of the way i can't really get you where you can see it but my crank dot is right straight at the bottom here's the one for whoop, here's the one for this cam and over here is the one for that cam so i'm pretty sure and also when we come over here and look at the lobes on the camshaft i just realized this the the uh both the valves should be all the way in the closed position like completely closed and if you'll notice you see here's one of the lobes the like protrusion part of the lobe on one side and here's the guy on the other side and they're both straight that way and that way so they are at like the closed most position so that's also key sign that we are top dead number one pretty sure this is cylinder one <laughs> Or is that one cylinder one? I don't know. They both appear to be at top dead. One of those is cylinder one. Probably that one, just because I said it was that one. Anyway, our dots line up. So now the next step is 
go into another time lapse mode. Now I've got my tensioner, not the tensioners, the guides mounted on both sides. Their mounting bolts are torqued to 89 inch pounds. And my new chain, the colored link here. Yeah, there you go. The colored link here is lined up right on top of that dot. Now when you go to stretching this chain out and getting it hooked up on this bottom sprocket you'll have to pay attention because like I just did I slid the uh, gear out so I could get the, the chain to hook onto it and then when you slide the gear back in the colored tooth isn't in the right place down there where you can't see right now it is like one spot to the left but after I mean to the right engines left our right you know what I mean but after you slide the sprocket all the way up back where it goes up against the motor face there you can take the chain and like push the slack down and skip it over one tooth all the way around with your finger and then it'll get that link where it's supposed to go and then it'll take the tension some of the slack out of the bottom side and move most of it here to the top side and then now that we have both of our links lined up on the bottom and lined up on the cam we're ready to pop the tensioner in place here bolt it down to its torque specifications and then we can pull the pin on it after you know the guide's in place pull the pin on it and it'll push the guide all tight up against our chain
got new Simon Chains and Engineers. <laughs> One interesting thing, though, I did have to um, get the breaker bar on this cam on the right side and loosen the guy and just ever so slightly move that cam to the right because I could not get my guy to line up where he needed to on that crank uh, gear otherwise. So I think that means the old chain had stretched and we were just a little out of time on this side before. So now we're back into time and everything should be happy and healthy and wonderful. And after we uh, put our cover on here, or maybe even before we put the cover on, at some point we're going to roll this thing over by hand to full rotation to make sure that all of our valves actuate and all of our pistons go up and down and nobody into each other because we just we'd rather not you'd much rather gently roll into uh if something was out of time you'd much rather find out gently rolling the motor around than on the starter or if you're real unlucky on the start up all right so now we've got the timing cover back installed goofed up some of the rtv maker on on top of the rubber gasket all the way around, mounted it back in place, all our 19 bazillion bolts are back in, even the four from the oil pan at the bottom, they're all in, and everything's torqued, I believe it's 1622, so I've got everybody at like 20, 21 foot-pounds. Now, that the timing cover's back on, go ahead and keep knocking out the hard stuff, instead of putting my damper and whatnot down there, let's move to the valve covers, because that job sucks. Taking them off, putting them on, it's just not a good time in these vehicles, let me tell you real bad. Anyway, that's what we'll do next. Next thing you'll see, the valve covers will be all cleaned up and gooped up and put back in. Yay! So, we finally have the valve covers reinstalled. Holy my goodness. Hands down, without a doubt, fellers. The hardest part of this entire ordeal is those valve covers. <laughs> Everything else is like relatively easy to do until you go removing and reinstalling those valve covers because of those back corners. This one, really not too bad. I might even go as far as to say that one's pretty easy. It slips right back in. The uh, brake booster really isn't in the way at all. But this guy, over here in that back corner, we have like the cutout in that, oop, I don't think I was showing you. We have like that cutout in the air box. Up there above it, there's no cutout and it like goes straight across. And it's just a nightmare getting that valve cover back over the camshaft assembly and down. However, you can do it. It's going to take a long time, and it really sucks. You can get the uh, you can get the wires and stuff out of your way pretty good. On these uh, fuel injectors, you're going to need to take the back two and unplug them. You can even turn the injector a little if you need to and spin it out of the way. The front tube clips, they really clear no problem, but back here you need all kind of room to get the valve cover, the back side of it, like up, so you can scoop it down over the cam assembly and get it to slide back where it goes. Also, the uh, spark plug wires here, remove those back two spark plug wires and get them out of your way. That'll help a whole lot in this EVAP hose. You can unplug it from down here or there, and then you can like set it out of the way much farther. That'll help. I ended up doing all those things, and I have my cord here, bungee cord, where I tied those two wire harnesses up out of the way. So you can really get like everything free and clear, but still just clearing this spot on that box is just not a good time. Anyway, I'm glad that's over with. Sure don't want to do that again. Let's pull the motor out next time. <laughs> but now we can go ahead and move forward with all the rest of our bits. 
I think I'll go ahead and put the coils back in place and then we'll stick your damper back on, torque it back down, and just keep reassembling things. The next worst part is just getting down there and putting the tire. Woo! Look at us go! Got the power steering pump mounted back up. It's pulley pressed back on. The dampener pressed back on to the crank. Put my idler pulley back into place. Water pump pulleys mounted back on. There's a lot of pulleys and they're back. And look, sitting here looking at it, it's kind of a funny shape too. It's like straight up and down, straight across the bottom. Got to make all these turns. And I got my uh, ignition coil pack mounts back in. They're all plugged back up here and there. My crank position and my knot sensor and my harness is all plugged back in. Everything's plugged back in except the uh, windshield wiper situation back there. It still needs to go in and get plugged back up in the washer hose. That in the battery. Other than that, we're all plugged in. Let's put the belt onto it. By the way, did you see I cleaned up my timing cover? Ooh, looks much better. We got the belt back on, that's all wonderful and all, but clearly the studded bolt didn't go in this spot. It, it must have went somewhere else and one of the non-studded bolts went there. Guess how I know? Woohoo! Now we're really getting close. Got my whole wiper situation back on, everything plugged in. Windshield wipers and the trim and all that's back in place. Alright. Every nut and bolt, I mean. All put back together like how it was to start with. Speaking of starting, it is about that time. up this video. It's right about 4 o'clock in the morning, but you know, all the bigs all put back together. I don't think I hear any timing chain noise anymore. We're burning off a little oil on the manifold there, but it doesn't look like our valve covers gaskets are leaking. So yeah. That's a happy, wonderful thing. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Also, I can see that the uh, idle is much, much smoother. Before, it had a steady little shake at an idle. If you put your hand on the alternator there, you feel like a little ee back and forth motion. I bet that was from the slop in the timing chains giving us valve timing out of time. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. I'm going to pull the car out and close the shop and take a nap. Comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see y'all in the next one.